My name is Chris Cady, and I'm a master hypnotist. There's a tremendous value in using hypnosis for team building and team bonding events. It builds on and reinforces that they really are a team and that they're there to work not only physically as a team but mentally as a team as well. The first thing we do is we do a comedy hypnosis show so that the entire team gets a chance to get hypnotized together and they really let go and they have a whole lot of laughter and laughter really brings people. I'll tell normal everyday people that they are world famous musicians and that they play their instrument incredibly well. And so when you see them in the show, you'll see their posture, everything about them is their perception of themselves is that they are an incredibly famous musician. I find somebody in the show who's got a tattoo on their arm and when I snap my fingers the tattoo develops some kind of magic powers. It might jump arms, it might start talking to them, it might fly around the room. And it's always a ton of fun because it's completely bizarre. Putting away, call it back. Come back. <laughs> Say it like you're a football player. Come back. Command it now. Say it like you're a football coach. It's not listening. Up down. Get your feet chopped. Get your feet chopped. Give me three. Give me. Give me three now. You're not intimidating enough. There's a great part in my show where I have men give birth. On the count of three, guys, you realize you're all nine months pregnant. It's a tremendous amount of fun to see what a, a male version of childbirth is. They are pushing and trying to push out that baby, and sometimes I make them have two or three babies. and they believe it. We take a little break and then I explain to everybody, now here's why all that happened. You saw the fun side of this. Now we're, there's a serious side too, where I'm gonna teach you to really use all of your mental resources to make you a better athlete. Athletes are wired to excel and all I help them do is get more of that out of themselves. I deliver results. I've never had failure with an athlete. The mind has a very strong role in your ability to perform at your best and neither works with you or it works against you, which is why a lot of guys like in baseball, they've lost the at bat before they even took a swing because they mentally felt defeated by the pitcher. We have a part in the show where I take usually the biggest, strongest guy in the show and I give him a one ounce plastic trophy. Liam, try to see if you can pick that up off the floor, please. 2,000 pounds. And you can see he is really struggling trying to pick up this trophy off the floor. And the more he struggles and grunts and tries to pick it up, the more and more I tell him that the heavier this trophy gets. He absolutely positively believes he cannot pick it up. Is it heavy? Yes. How heavy? Pretty heavy. And then I'll snap my fingers and I'll have somebody else come over and I'll say, for you, light as a feather, light as a feather, go ahead. How could that be? <laughs> and it's all about affecting their belief systems and their realities. But how come he can do it? He's stronger. Uh, somehow I don't think so. He looks stronger. Okay. I sent my fingers, light as a feather. What it really is, is a metaphor for how people go through life. That if you really believe you can't do something, then you can't do it. One of the 
biggest challenges that professional athletes have is most of them got to where they are based on natural talent. So they were always the biggest, fastest, strongest kid when they were playing this game in school. And let's face it, when you're a kid in school, half the kids don't even want to be on the team. They're there because their parents are making them, or somehow they think they're going to cowboy up and man up by playing this sport. And they're not very good, and they're not well committed, and they have a lot of other interests as well, so they don't really get good. Then, through hard work, he gets moved up. And now, everybody is the fastest, biggest, strongest, most naturally talented kid. Now what are you going to do? Now you're looking for an edge. Hypnosis can give them that edge. Now it's my way! No! Again! No! Again! No! Peter Siegel was my sports hypnosis coach mentor, trainer, boss. Is there a difference between a sports psychologist and a sports hypnotist? And if so, what is it? Sports psychologists deal with the conscious mind, which is the state that everybody's in now. You're able to uh, uh, decipher information. You have a critical capacity. You can evaluate. You have a reasoning capacity. Sports hypnotherapists deal with the unconscious mind. I'll give you a very, very quick example of that between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. What do the letters P-O-L-K spell? Pole. Pole. What's the yeah. white of an egg called? Yolk. Yolk. What do the letters S-T-O-O-P spell? Stoop. Stoop. What do you do with a green light? Stop. Stop. What do the letters R-O-A-S-T spell? Roast. What do you put in a toaster? Toast. Okay. okay. Well, let, listen to the responses. In a toaster, you don't put toast, you put bread. <laughs> At a green light, you don't stop, you, you go. go. And the white of an egg is not, is not the yolk, it's the egg white. Without thinking about it, you just responded based upon an right. unconscious assumption. Now, if you take that onto the field, you have to think about the thoughts, the feelings, and the past kinds of memories and emotions that a player brings out there. In certain situations, without thought, they react. And my job is to help them remove the negatives and strictly deal in a positive, powerful state of mind. And his list of clients was the who's who of the top, top Hall of Famers in sports, in NFL, in NBA, in Major League Baseball, in the Olympics. And I got to benefit from all of that training and all of his cutting edge methods. And I apply them to my clients today. I've been working with Scott Spezios. He's a two-time World Series champion. And his father, Ed Spezio, also a two-time World Series champion. And his father figured out way back when but games are won in the mind before they're won on the field. And that's because of mental preparation. You, know, you need to be able to go out there focused on, on what you want to do. And, and he's helped me uh, be able to, uh, to look at things, uh, what I'm, what I'm going to do and how it's going to feel once I get it done. Uh, I have an inner confidence that I've never really totally understood. Guys pumped up, guys focused for the game. It was a uh, brought us all together. You just feel the power, and uh, the team was really fired up about it. You know, there was, we were talking about it the whole time before the game, and, you know, it just, as it shows on the scoreboard, I guess, you know. Done a, uh, you know, done a great job helping me. And uh, I think that, you know, tonight's game, you know, I was really focused in on what, you know, the, the exact points that I need to do. I never thought I could pitch in the big leagues, but here I am, and I'm doing well. You automatically think the word devastate. You're now ready to fire a flaming, overpowering fastball precisely to your chosen point. We work so much on the physical part of the game, and the mental part of the game is bigger than the physical part. And because uh, if, if, whether you're playing hockey or whatever, if you don't think you can do it, you're not going to do it. An athlete should spend a lot of time usually using hypnosis and visualization so that they actually place themselves in a winning competitive situation long before they set foot on the field. They do it mentally at bed at night and especially critically the night before. Uh, women are profoundly responsive to hypnosis, uh, more so in many cases because they're very in touch with their feelings. I've worked with a lot of female volleyball players, softball players, uh, gymnasts, um, basketball players, and cheerleaders too for, uh, for gymnastics cheer. Many athletes are surprised at how quickly this works, and they just can't quite figure it out. It was all because they started working on a part of their game that they never worked on before, which is their mental game. Rob Tenure, head football coach at Moorhead State University. 
Chris Cady uh, came in and visited with our uh, student athletes today. I would recommend him to, uh, to your student athletes. The show was outstanding, it was funny, it was hilarious, and then there was obviously a focus side to it, a mental part of it that our student athletes uh, were really attracted to. Our guys laughed today, they had a good time, um, but I'm also excited to see the benefits of the, the mental part of it. Uh, I can already see within the first few hours uh, after the program uh, that it's going to be beneficial to our football team. I have a skill set that you may have been overlooking because you've been completely focused on, on strategy and on, on winning and on strength and conditioning and all, and all the physical aspects of the game, but I'm really focused on the mental game. It's the only competitive advantage that you have left and I know how to do it because of my significant and unique training.